All right, so here's my BX5A, and um, I have a blown capacitor on it. I'm gonna show you what it looks like when a capacitor is blown. And turn it on, it pops, and it has a buzzing sound. And we turn it off, it pops again a little louder. You really saw that speaker move. So this is what it should look like. Nice and quiet, comes on evenly, and then slowly dies out. All right, so I've gotten started a little bit already uh, just to show you what I've done. So the speakers here, I'm sorry, the screws here, I took the screws out all the way around. And all it took was Phillips. I like basic wood screws. I uh, just took them out real slowly, no problem. So now I need to do the front side. Uh, this speaker, the, the little tweeter here, needs to come out. This guy will pull out and we'll disconnect them but this guy's actually still attached. Okay, so one of the things I don't think I mentioned here is the Allen wrench I'm using is a metric Allen wrench. This will come out. Can I have to jiggle it a little bit. All right. Come on in close. So usually I take a picture, just like everybody else, to look. So this is my picture. White. Black is here. White is there. I'll pull that one off. And just pull out. Just like that. This guy's attached to the sub in the back. Pull the sub out. Same deal. Amazing what you can find inside of these things. <laughs> I ordered this from, uh, that's all we need to do because basically this is attached on the other side. This pops out. Alright, come on. I was worried at first this was the one that I already did because I fixed one once. So you can see there's a wire tie. We're gonna have to snap that wire tie before we go any further. Just like that. Bam. So I'll have to find a wire tie because I don't have one right now. All right, now we've got all kinds of room. So I don't know if you can tell or not. I don't know if I can do it in video. Oh, I can. That one is bulging. Very top of it. That one's flat and that one's bulging. That's what I thought was wrong with it and that is for sure it. I think I'm gonna replace both of these because I'm not for sure. This one feels like a little bit. So they're both gonna get replaced, both the capacitors. And I've already ordered replacements. I had a package, oh, let me zoom you back out.
Go leave you guys in there. Also, my fingers won't get too much in the way. So I've already, already ordered my replacements. I'll have a link to these, the exact ones I bought in the description below. But brand on them. Chongix. I'm guessing they're Chinese. <laughs> Maybe they're not the best quality. That's what they had available on Amazon. <clears throat> so another thing we had to do was this plate. I don't know if you can see or not. There's a bottom plate here. And that's going to have to be snapped. And uh, this plate, I think, gets unscrewed in here with that screw and that screw. And then this plate will drop, giving us access to Again, there's my reference. Black is on bottom, green and yellow is on. All right, as you can see, I took a screwdriver to these. Here in a second, I'll pull out a longer screwdriver because that bottom one was really hard to get to. And so if you do this, make sure you have a nice long screwdriver, which I did not have handy. Your gear, a little bit. Ooh, that's magnetic. Look at that. Did not know that. Nice. Okay, so now this plate is glued. So we'll have to rip some of that glue off a little bit, unfortunately. Just kind of working it off here. So yeah, those pads right there were glued onto that board. All right, so now I have full access to my two capacitors, right there and right there, and right here and right here. All right, so as you can see, I start to take off the capacitors and you guys will have to forgive me, my soldering skills are not exactly the best. But I got this nice little sucker, solder sucker, I think is what it's called. And all I did was I just heated up the solder and sucked it off, heated up the solder, sucked it off. And then with that first capacitor, once I got enough solder out, I started to uh, rock it uh, back and forth and side to side to, to basically rocket loose and it's kind of hard to see but the pins ended up kind of being separate all right so one of the other challenges was getting the tape off of the capacitors so you can kind of see I get in there with a razor blade and not not tape the cover of the capacitors so what you'll see later is they actually glued the base of the capacitors to the board so I found this the best method to actually get in there and rock those parts out. So after it was the cover was cut and it was no longer glued, it was pretty much free standing and letting me rock it back and forth to actually pull it out. Just kind of trimming up a little bit there to pull it out. All right, there's the first one. So the second one, I had to kind of do the same thing, get get in there with the razor blade and actually trim out the covering. 
<laughs> and it was kind of a pain in the butt, so you'll see me kind of struggle with the razor blade. Anyway, I eventually pull it off and I kind of repeat the same process. Now, what I will say was when you do this, be careful that you don't scratch up the board very much. I kind of did. And it didn't it didn't do anything, but I think that if I had scratched it up any worse than what I did, it probably would have made a big difference. So, be sure to try and be careful and be safe when you're actually trimming them wires. And I repeat the same process what I, that I did with the first one of heating each side, rocking it back and forth, kind of almost twisted a little bit too, just to get some movement out of it. And once the movement started, you continue to kind of pull those um, uh, leads from the capacitor straighten them out and keep rocking until I got them out and just repeated the same process over and over again I ended up pulling a some wires off of a, uh, a mounting house, like a housing, just to have some more access there. And then pulled the rest of the tape off from the glue. It's kind of hard to see. Another thing here is when you put the, the new capacitors in, there's a positive side and a negative side. And I didn't get a really good video part of that, so I had to cut it. Uh, but just to make sure that they're lined up, positive and negative. And then uh, put in the new capacitors as down tight as you possibly can. And then I uh, ended up just doing the same thing that they had done previously and pushing the uh, leads to the side to hold the capacitor into place. Then tinned the tip of my soldering iron and went to town. I've learned through experience that the soldering iron that I have is not the greatest. So you'll see that I kind of have to redo some of my work because this is only like my third or fourth soldering iron job <laughs> so it's not it's not very good uh, to say the least but you know I went back with the sucker and fixed some of my mistakes until the uh, the joints looked really good All right, and then I just cut the leads off after everything was done. Again, taking care not to scratch up the board, which I kind of did right here a little bit. Re-put in that, that wire. Put the plate back on and then the screws back in. There was still some sticky residue left over, so it held itself into place for the most part okay. It was kind of a little bit of a struggle to get everything lined up before I actually was able to screw stuff in. So just with some practice, you know, <laughs> struggling to get it in there, it'll eventually go in. And then I had to repeat the process with the same, the bottom piece, making sure you got a nice long screwdriver to uh, screw in the bottom piece because it's so far behind the... Uh, the rest of the components down there, it was a little bit of a trick to get in. And the reassembly was the same thing that I did before. Uh, the only thing that's different 
is I didn't record me putting the wire tie back in for the cables. All right, so we just finished putting it back together. My camera died out at the end there, so you didn't get to see the whole thing. Uh, but you saw most of it. What you didn't see was me putting it back together. Just a reverse of assembling it. So now we're gonna go test it out. Nice, should die out slowly. Nice, so far so good. Well, let's hear how it sounds. Works. Go down from the broken sky, traced out by the city lights. Thank you for watching guys. Obviously you can see the speakers working. So repair took about an hour to do. That's with recording. So maybe 45 minutes or so at best. So uh, thanks so much guys. Have a good one. Yeah.